In a previous video, we reviewed this excellent Cobb LED strip from Robus. We've used that strip to light this workshop for the past year, and it is absolutely fantastic. I was a little bit concerned because you did the solder joints on the corners. Mm. And we'll come back to solder later in this video. However, we did receive many inquiries in the comments from our previous view about the availability of the strip in RGB or colour changing options. Now we have some good news because it is now available and we're going to take a closer look. Cobb or chip on board is a technical name given to this LED strip because the LED chips are mounted directly onto the circuit board enabling them to be placed closer together. The chips are then coated in this silicon coating to diffuse the light creating a uniform lighting effect. Cobb strip is also known as dotless as you can't see the individual LED elements. Now you're probably wondering which lighting applications would benefit from using dotless LED strip. Well, for starters, any application where the strip will be directly visible, like a light strip along a wall or a ceiling. Now, additionally, it's worth considering applications where the strip is placed close to the wall, such as in small cross-section cove lighting. And finally, the one that catches people out, including myself, glossy or reflective surfaces. So when you're lighting onto something like glass or tiles. Now, I've made this mistake myself at home, putting an LED strip underneath a bathroom cabinet, and I can see the reflection of the LED strip in the floor tiles, and it does annoy me every time I use the bathroom. Speaking of bathrooms and other wet applications, this new strip is available in IP20 and IP67 versions. Both are rated at 24 volts DC and have a power rating of 14 watts per meter. Mm -hmm. Now, apart from the excellent uniform lighting effect, there is another reason that we love this LED strip system from Robus. It's the same easy clip system that we used on the white cob system, but now with four poles to allow individual connections to the red, green and blue LED channels. Now let's take a closer look at how the easy system works, starting with the IP20 version. Cut the strip to the required length for the application, simply peel back the end of the backing strip from the adhesive tape, carefully push the end of the LED strip into the easy cable connector, and use a pair of pliers to press down the IDC connectors. I like the way we've added some heat shrink, one of your favourites, to the end of the pliers to make them soft jaws, Gordon. Yeah, just, just a little, little tip there for when, you, when you're doing those. Now, you can also get the easy clip connectors to allow the strip to go around corners and a through connector to join strips together using exactly the same process. The strip itself comes as a 20 meter reel and you can power a maximum of five meters on each cable connection. The cut points between the system are 3.3 centimeters apart. I have a helpful tip for you. If you typically use red and black leads on your power supply, the black wire on the strip indicates that it is the positive connection, Gordon. But luckily I didn't, uh, I didn't damage the strip when I made that mistake, Gary. And the process is similar for the IP67 version with just a few additional steps to help maintain that IP rating. The IP67 strip has an additional silicon coating over the entire strip and we need to break through that to make the electrical connection. I peel off the adhesive strip from the area in which the connection is going to be fitted using the plastic end cap as a guide. Apply a small amount of RTV silicon into the clear end cap. The cap has an open area on one side which should be positioned on the same side as the adhesive strip. Warm the end of the strip with a heat gun, introduce the IDC connector and push it firmly down. You can usually hear a satisfying click. It's also the same process, Gordon, to make end-to-end -end cable connections. You can also join pieces of the strip using the through connectors. Mm -hmm. And finally, don't forget to add an end cap. And again, we'd always recommend a quick test with a power supply. This all looks too easy, and we started off by mentioning your poor soldering, which you did attempt with a magnifying glass, the third hand, and you went in, and from a distance, it looked all right. But on closer inspection, Gordon? It looks absolutely awful. So I wouldn't, uh, although you can solder direct to LED strip, and it does come from the factory soldered, I think for electricians, if you're, if you're not up to soldering, then this easy clip system is super easy and it's a fast process. We made up this strip here in minutes, really. So it's for me, 
it's an absolute winner. We love LED strips, something you still call lead tape, and how it allows electricians to add creativity to a project. Coming soon, we have a practical video where we'll use some of this robust LED strip to light a bar. Mm, looking forward to that. So join us in that video for some great lighting tips and advice on things like power supply selection. If you're new to LED strip installation, check out the full playlist of videos we've made on it. We've got everything in there from cut points to understanding the symbols you find on LED drivers.